Okay, guys, we're at West Hammer Tech here today, and we're going to practice in the lab how to check our clearance between a connecting rod and a crankshaft for our plane bearing style bearings. Uh, we're going to accomplish that with some plastic gauge, so I'm going to show you guys how to use that. A couple things we've already did is we went ahead and cleaned this really good with some brake cleaner. We want a spotless clean area. We don't uh, use the assembly procedures when doing this except for the part when it comes to torquing. So another thing, I've got a bearing here that's just loose on here. We're going to talk about these. I'm making every attempt possible. If you want to go ahead and just zoom here. On this bearing here, there's two pieces to it. The other half is still in the cap here. We uh, have a locating tab that we can use to pry it out, which you can see right here. And we'll basically take a pick or screwdriver and pop that out. We definitely don't want to bend this or we don't want to pinch this in half to deform it. And one of the other things that we talked about in class was not to touch this with our fingers because the acid on your fingers can etch into that and cause it to rust and then uh, affect its performance. So in the case of you guys out there doing this in the real world, you'd want to use some rubber gloves, contact cleaner, be really careful with it. Another point that we made in class here today is that as we clean it, we don't want to be wiping across here, which would actually push the debris in. We want to spray that down, let the aerosol push any dirt off, pat it down dry, and then use some compressed air to do the, the final cleaning on that. So let's take a look at uh, getting this back onto the rod itself. What I'm going to do here is basically just pinch this in place. And what I'm doing is making sure that this notch is going to get located properly in here. So this is starting to roll on me already. And then one of the things I can do when I get close here is go ahead and uh, push this down. And then actually, do you see how it rolled and how much is sticking up on me? It's pretty excessive here and whatnot. The problem with that is, is that it's going to uh, be too high for the assembly. So I'm going to split the difference here, and I'm going to reinstall that like so. Now I'm pretty close, and when I go to actually tighten this down, that's going to uh, correct itself around here. The other thing about connecting rods here is that we have marks or indicators here with letters. And you can see here how I have a matching line across here of a number one. So I'm going to take this, and as I pinch these together, that straightened out that gap that we just had, so we're nice and level on there. When I go to assemble this here, it's important that I do have my matching marks on here that determine the size of what this is, and we'll get into that more in class. Our goal right now is just to learn how to use plastic gauge. So as I take this back off, per the service manual, you have that page handy? Brandis, can you zoom in into this? What we have here is, is how to actually torque these bolts. Now, further up in the instructions is that picture up here. It actually tells us to replace the bolts. That is extremely common here. We do not reuse these. We're going to put new uh, nuts and bolts on there. You guys, obviously, for your engines that we're just doing it over and over, it's not a big deal for class here. But the other thing is, is we have to know how to do it correctly. And it says here that we need to uh, dry these thoroughly. Then it tells us to uh, lubricate both the bearing on the bottom and top side. And then it tells us to apply a small amount of engine oil to the threads in the in the seating surface of the connecting rod nut. So that means this surface or the bottom of the nut. Now the reason we want to do that is it's going to affect our torque differently, right? If we don't do the oil, does that affect how that torque is actually applied? Absolutely. So go ahead and give your iPad back. And then you're going to walk me through the actual torque procedure because we do a little bit different here. So we'll start off with our plastic gauge here. It comes in these uh, tubes, if you will. You have long strips like this and then we'll keep cutting them down to size. So on this one here, we actually have one, two, three, four, five pieces left. And then on one side, on this one here, is this zoomed in here? Really getting close. Okay, you can see here that we have a standard or we have thousandths of an inch. When I flip this around this side, it gives us a metric scale. So determine you know, what you're more comfortable with or what your service manual is asking you to do, you can uh, use this for metric and standard. I'm going to use a standard. One thing I'm going to do is verify that my piece of plastic is inside here. You can see it's just this whole, whole tube here. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to cut a piece off. And what that gives me 
is a scale. So I'm going to take this piece of plastic, lay it across here, I'm going to torque this down, and then what I'm able to do is check the width of it to see what my clearance actually is. Now, give me a, uh, there's one thing I forgot on the bench here. Can you give me the grease out of the cabinet up there? One thing that uh, seems to help this a little bit is I put a little bit of grease where the plastic gauge is going to lay across here so that it uh, will hold it in place. I'm going to trim this up just a hair. Thank you, sir. So I'm just going to put a light little tab here. Take my plastic gauge and I'll lay it across here like so. So you guys are all going to do these on your engines. Don't touch the bench, please. All right. You guys see that? I'm just laying it across there. Here's where the challenge becomes. The challenge becomes, you can see how we supported the crankshaft on some V-blocks here. And by the way, right now we're just doing connecting rods. The same procedure is done on the main bearings as well. So we have one, two, three, four, five main bearings on this four-cylinder crankshaft. We do the same exact thing. But what you'll see here is I'm going to take advantage of the bench to actually help me hold this in place. So see how I have the V-block supporting the crankshaft? I'm intentionally putting the rod up here, and then I'm going to torque this in place. If you move the rod around a lot while you're doing this, what's that do with the plastic? And it smears it a little bit, doesn't it? Okay. The other thing that they're wanting us to do is to apply oil on the threads, like it said, okay, and the sealing surface of the nut. Are you getting this in the video? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to get those prepared and ready to go for us. And, and then 120 degrees, I think it was? Yep. Okay, right. so I want some help here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys figure out what I need. Now i got to make sure and line up my mark. Remember we talking about that? I'm yeah. going to put it up so that it's just easier for me to see. I'm not worried about... This can uh, this test can be done in either direction. Go ahead. I've got that down. Now I do not want to move from here. So let's not uh, touch the bench here. Go ahead. I've got these lubed up just like it says to do so in the manual. Notice here how I'm going to go back and forth, and that's also helping making sure that that bearing's actually seating nice and even. So, I mean, I really switched it back and forth a few times. Now it's showing the applied torque. I'm only at six pounds. I need just 20. So, now from here, this is where I'm going to quit. It's a little hard to hold, isn't it? Okay, I need to change my tool to get into a degree, and I have to set this flat, I can't show it for the camera. Right now it's finding a zero, last time it was at 90. I need to reset this flat, there's intentional places on the tool to find this degree torque. I'm going to just toggle through, make it reset itself, and then I'm going to pump this up to 120. Okay, and you're sure of that as I go to torque this? Okay, about the snap-on wrench here is, is that once I pick my base number and then I convert it to a torque angle, this will actually tell you what the torque is actually being applied as well as the 100, you know, whatever the degree measurement is. So if I put the 1,000th across there, you can actually see how it's not near that wide. It quits about right there, okay? As I go to the one and a half thousandths, it's still not quite that that wide. As I come up to the two, we're looking pretty close now. It's right in between one and a half and two thousandths of an inch clearance. So what we'll do is we'll move out of the way. I'm going to let my students here go ahead and uh, go through this. Listen, you guys absolutely, this is a requirement to do to figure out what the clearance is or what that specification is, okay? Then, when you go back for final assembly, it's crucial that you clean that off. And can you scratch that off? No. No, you don't want to do that at all. I mean, you can scratch it off by damaging it. So you want to clean this off with some good cleaner. 
some brake cleaner, get that really good and clean. The other thing is you got to think about the part of it that you'll see that smashed onto the rod. You'd use use a bunch of on the bearing itself. So you need to use brake cleaner. Do not get in here and sit and wipe back and forth. Kind of dab along there. That'll break that plastic gauge up and then you'll be able to clean it off appropriately. Don't use your fingers. And then on reassembly, lots of assembly lube. Don't forget you're going to replace your nuts and your bolts. That's extremely common almost every connecting rod out there that you do not reuse those. We'll talk more in classroom about stretch on that. So that's your lesson for today.